Hi there, Acura owners. Today in your 2020 Acura RDX, we're gonna be taking a look at and showing you how to install E-Trailer's Class 3 two-inch trailer hitch receiver. And this is what our hitch looks like when it's installed. It is gonna hang down below the bumper. There are two different versions of the Acura RDX bumper here. This is the version that has a factory hitch. The factory hitch is only a one and a quarter, so the customer wanted to have a two inch receiver, so the old one was removed, and this is what the new one would look like when installed while removing it. Now, if you have a just a stock bumper that was not designed to have the factory hitch installed, this would be covered up all the way across, so you would get a bit of a sleeker look with this hitch installed. The receiver is gonna be two inch by two inch, so it's gonna be great for all of your towing needs, whether you're wanting to put it accessories in it, like bike racks or cargo carriers, or if you're wanting to use it to actually do some towing, you could slide a drawbar in there as well and hook up a small utility trailer or maybe even a small boat to it. You'll secure those accessories using a 5 8 inch hitch pinning clip. Now, one doesn't come included with the hitch, but we've got plenty available here at eTrailer, and I'd recommend locking ones to protect your investment. On bottom, we have plate style safety chain loops that has a moderate size opening. You can see our small chain goes on and off with these and our big one here also can go on and off. It kind of hangs up just a little bit in a certain spot there, but you could easily put them on and off. This hitch features a 350 pound tongue weight, which is the force going down on top of the receiver. And that should be enough for a four bike platform rack fully loaded up. It's not gonna be quite enough for the largest cargo carriers that we have here at eTrailer, but you should still be able to get plenty of gear out of the back of your vehicle onto the carrier to free up more room for more gear inside or maybe additional passengers. Now you do wanna keep in mind that the tongue weight is gonna be the weight of anything inserted in the receiver. So the weight of the bike rack or cargo carrier plus whatever is put on it. So just make sure you don't exceed that 350 pounds. It also has a 3,500 pound gross towing capacity, which is how much that it can pull behind it. And 3,500 pounds is gonna be enough for small utility trailers, um, little John boat should be fine. And you can probably get away with some smaller pop-up campers and maybe even some small teardrop trailers. Now I've got some measurements for you to help you when deciding on accessories. From the center of our hitch pin hole to the edge of the rear bumper, it's right at about an inch and a half. And that's important when determining if your accessories will contact the bumper when inserted and if they can be placed in the upright storage position without contacting the bumper. And from the ground to the top inside edge of the receiver tube, we're right at about 14 inches. That's important when determining if you need to drop, a rise, or a raise shank on your accessories. And after you got it all installed, it's a good idea just to double check to make sure that your hands-free liftgate operation still functions. You will need to need the key nearby. Sometimes you have to unlock it first and just kind of swipe your foot here on the driver's side. There we go, we can see that it opens. And we'll just hold the key here. You should be able to close it as well. May not be quite as sensitive as it was before, but it does still function. There it goes. So now that we've covered some of the features of our hitch, why don't you follow along with us and we'll show you how to get it installed. We'll begin our installation here at the back of the vehicle. Go ahead and open up your lift gate. You'll want to first lower down your spare tire. You can find the mechanism here to lower it down right in the back. Just open that up. There's a small cover here that just pops up and there's a little rubber plug in place and there's the mechanism. You can just use the tools that come with your vehicle to lower it down. If you need some assistance with that, you can look it up in your vehicle's owner's manual and you can find out where the tools are, the bags, and everything that you need for this. Now that we got our spare tire out of the way, we need to drop the exhaust down so that we'll have enough room to be able to fit our components in place. There are several straps or hangers that hold it in place. I'm gonna show you this one here and then before we move back, we're gonna make sure we put a strap in place before taking any ones further out beyond that. So for this rear one here, there are actually two pegs that go into it. We're gonna use a little bit of silicone spray to help, help it slide off of there a little bit easier. And you can actually just take a pry bar now and right up against the muffler, just push that back out of the way, just like that. And that'll get that side loose. Now, before we move on to the next one, we do wanna put our strap in place. So we're just gonna take a strap with a couple of hooks. I'm gonna hook it right here on the coil spring. We'll do that on each side. And then you can just kind of pull your strap tight a little bit. That way it'll hold it so when we go to remove the next hangers, it can't drop down too far on you. So we'll have one right here. And we're going to spray this one as well. This one here, you really don't have a lot to pry against, but I found that if you take your pry bar and just go behind it and give it a good push, it'll just push right off of there. 
So we'll do that to the other side as well. And then we have one more hanger that's a little bit further forward that we're gonna remove the same way. So if you just keep following your exhaust forward, you'll find another hanger located up here. We pop that one off the same way. And then on the opposite side, you're gonna have those in the exact same location. So we went ahead and got that one off. We've got these off, took off this one back here as well on this side. These ones at the very back, they do have a little opening. So sometimes you have to just kind of push it back just a little bit, kind of pivots just to get it out of the way. And then we can pull our exhaust down on each side. This one over here caught as well. So we'll just pop that back out of the way there. And now we'll support our exhaust and loosen up our strap to be able to get it to come down some. And that should be enough for us to work with right there, but this way we can't pull it down too low to cause any damage to anything. So next you'll want to prepare your hardware. Take each of your bolts and place a conical tooth washer on them with the teeth facing away from the head of the bolt so that way it'll dig into our hitch. All right, so now we're going to put our hitch into position. If you've got an extra set of hands, I'd recommend grabbing an extra set, but it's not a very heavy hitch, so you could potentially do this by yourself. We are gonna take it and kind of twist it up into position. So we're kind of lifting it this way to get it around the exhaust that we've lowered. Then pivoting it up into position there. And then one side can kind of rest on your exhaust while you get the other side. So we're just gonna kind of just leave it sit like that. So while the one side's kind of rested up on the exhaust, we're just gonna lift it up Kind of using my body, I've got it a little bit resting on top of my head or my shoulder, whatever I need to use here to support the one side. And get a bolt started on this side. Once we get this one started, we'll head over to the other side to get another bolt started. After we got the other side started, you can see now it just kind of pivots around so we can pivot it up and secure it into place. I, you do have to push up a little bit hard here to be able to get this one to start. We did get it started in there now. And you can see there's a little bit of contact right here on the bumper, so that's why you gotta push up just a little hard. It's not enough to where it's gonna damage anything, but it will flex it just a little bit. So once we get each one started, we can go back and tighten them down. We're gonna use a 19 millimeter socket to do so. After you've got them run down, we can go back with our torque wrench and torque them to the specifications outlined in our instructions. We can now go ahead and reinstall our exhaust. So we're just gonna lift it back up and put our hangers back on. A Little bit of the silicone spray will make it easier to get all of your hangers slid into place. They simply just lift up and they just push right back on just like that. Once your exhaust is back up, don't forget to take your strap down. We don't want to leave that in place. And then you can reinstall your spare tire. It will fit, it clears right around the hitch, so that'll go right back up. And that completes our installation of eTrailer's Class 3 2-inch trailer hitch receiver on our 2020 Acura RDX.